Hi everybody, my name's Jason. I'm Kaden. I'm Jaden. I'm Eli. And we are the Yahoo in the Torah channel. And we're also the Yahoo in the Torah.net website. We're also Yahscriptures.com. And you will find us on Rumble, you'll find us on Odyssey, and you'll find us everywhere. We are um, like the plague. We're everywhere. Hopefully you guys are doing well. Much love to everybody. You guys are our family, and we hope that you guys consider us your family. And um, we are deep into the book of the writings of Abraham. And for anybody who would like to get a hard copy of the book of the writings of Abraham, um, it is available at yahscriptures.com. There's a link below. The writings of Abraham is available. This is just a single book. Um, I think it's like twelve dollars. And um, for every ten that are are sold, there is one Bible that makes it into our brothers in chains in in um, prisons in the U.S. prison system. Um, there's also a new book that's available now, the Enoch, which is the Enoch book itself. I think it's only like twelve bucks. I think these are all under like thirteen bucks. So all these are available right now, as well as the scriptures that we are reading out of. We're doing a pre-order for these right now, and we hope that people will jump on the bandwagon here and grab these. They will be available in February of March of next year. We are going to the printer, hopefully by November 5th. This is a large print, very nice scriptures. This is better than the than the Hallelujah Scriptures version of it. It's way better than the Sefer version of it. <clears throat> and it has 103 books that are fully restored names, all the names of our Creator are restored, the names of our Messiah are restored, all the patriarchs of before have been all put back, all the pagan names, all the pagan stuff has been pulled out of these, and you end up also with 37 other books in this scriptures, and it's only 59 bucks, and large print, so you guys with bad vision can see this, as well as myself, and um, if you guys would like to help out, this is a prison ministry as well, and once we are on full steam ahead with this, for every restored name scriptures that is sold for $59, we're able to put one full scriptures into a prison. It's a little under a full scriptures, but it's, it's, it's close enough to the, to give us that mark that we can do this. So, um, gentlemen, how in the world are you guys doing today? Good. Um, what in the world are you guys doing? You guys all look like zombies. Kate, are you all right? Yeah. You all right? Did you get to sleep? Yeah. All right. You guys have a big day planned? No, what, just... What's your big day? What you doing, Jade? Proofing the Bible. Oh, or... Uh, oh, that sounds really super exciting. Eli, what are you doing today? Reading. What are you reading? Uh, Isaiah. You're proofreading the Bible too? Yep. Uh, Kate, what are you doing today? Uh, working. Graphic design? Yeah. Okay, well, that's a lot of fun. Well, four out of, four out of five of us are proofreading scriptures today, and um, <clears throat> one of us has a real job. It's probably a lot more fun than proofreading scriptures. How are you guys doing? Your eyes burning? Uh, sometimes. Sometimes. We're down to what? How many books left? 40-something? Mr. 40, yeah, right at 40. I finished off Acts yesterday, again, line by line. What we're doing is we're going line by line, jot by jot, tittle by tittle, trying to make sure that there are no mistakes and trying to get out the word of our creator as perfect as we possibly can. And uh, there's 1.4 million words, so there is a lot of words. So hopefully by the time we're done with this, we will have a fully functioning prison ministry that prints its own Bibles for free and has a very good value for everybody out there. So... Thank you to everybody out there who's got them so far. If anyone wants them, please help support this prison ministry. <clears throat> All right. Where are we at to this point? Can somebody review me what we are at with um, our dear brother Abram, uh, Father Abram? How, where are we at? It's, we're in chapter 77, so someone give me a quick recap. So after um, Abraham got raised up in the city with Noah and uh, Shem, he left and went um, and went to the city and saw wickedness. He, he got, got his people out, who were the people of Yah. And then he went to um, uh, Egypt, and, or he went to his father's house first, Terak, and then he went to destroy his idols. Nimrod stuck him in a fire. He didn't die. His brother got stuck in the fire to see if he would die. His brother ended up dying. He got out. F um, Nimrod wanted to see uh, if he could get his power, obtain power like Abraham, but he refused to follow Yahuwah, so he didn't get all the power. Then Abraham ended up almost being trying to be sacrificed, and then he got, he was freed. And then uh, Yahoo told him to go uh, go leave leave this land and go to the other land. And he went down to Egypt. And then uh, Yahoo saw a nightmare. And then uh, afterwards, Yahoo told him, uh, "Tell tell Pharaoh and tell the people of Egypt that Sarah is your sister." And they did. And then all Egypt got cursed because Pharaoh tried to take her as his wife. And um, then he got blessed by Pharaoh, and he gave him Hagar. Nice. And Hagar is who? He is his concubine. It will later in the Hagar future. Hagar is she. Is it she Hagar? She, yeah. Yes, he is. Oh, sorry. Yeah, she is. Yes, so she is Pharaoh's daughter. Um, okay, let's begin. Everyone ready? Is she yeah. ready? 
Yep. All right, let's roll. At the end of seven years, Yahuwah visited me and he said unto me, Baruch art thou, Abram, servant of the Most High, for thy joy shall be great in my mansion with this multitude which thou hast brought unto me. Wherefore, thy name shall no more be called Abram, but Abraham. Didn't we do this one last yeah. time? Yeah. We might have in 78. Are we in 78? Yeah. yeah. Did we make it? Yeah, so I think we did. I think we're on 78. So we're going to try this one again. Okay, starting in 78. Um, yes, and so we already ran through that one. And um, I guess since anybody that does this, this is, the, this is where Abram's name is changed to Abraham. Sarai's name is changed to Sarah. Okay, so sorry, guys. 78. When I received this word of Yahuwah, and he had departed from me. I went unto Pharaoh and told him that I must depart from his realm, as Yahuwah had a work for me to do in the land of Kenna on. Then he was loath, though he was loath to see me go. Pharaoh bowed to the will of Elohim and appointed men from his own bodyguard to escort me to the borders of Mitzram. And he gave me gifts of cattle and silver and gold and fine cloth and precious jewels of every kind. So I went up out of Mitzram, and Lot accompanied me, who had taken three wives while in Mitzram. Namely, Yennefer, daughter of Eleazar of Damascus, Deborah, daughter of Cumin, Kum who had come out of the city of Ur, and Astra, daughter of Pharaoh, sovereign of Mitram. All right, we never ever heard this before, right? We've never ever heard in this regular scriptures that Lot had more wives than one. All right, right? so which one is the Th main that one? That was the question I had. I don't know. I don't know which one is our salt pillar. Feel like which one's the salt pillar? I feel like the like one come from Ur, I think. Um, yeah, Ashtaroth, I mean, you have a, a, a daughter of Pharaoh, right? Ashtaroth. So it seems as if uh, he had a, a concubine daughter um, named, um, what's, what's his, Hagar. Oh, yeah. Hagar, she's getting old. Okay, and then we also have another daughter uh, <laughs> and she's named Ashtaroth, and that's, you know, that's a kind of a satanic name, you know, because you have Ashtaroth poles, but of course, coming, a daughter of Pharaoh is probably going to be named like one of their mighty ones and things of that nature. Nature. So yeah, we don't know which one this, that became the salt lick. So maybe we'll figure this out. But as far as now, we don't know this. 80. Traveling slowly and stop. Why are you laughing, Eli? Salt lick. <laughs> like salt lick. Dude, it, say, it says the, the oxen. It didn't it say the oxen lick it up and it doesn't. <laughs> it, at some point, yeah. It, it doesn't change. It doesn't actually change. I think that's one, one of the extracurricular books is that the, the, the oxen of the field will lick it, but it, it, it stayed the same. Which was, none of those are the ones from. None of these are the wives? Uh, so he must have picked up another wife and son. Because then he goes to Sodom and has another wife because she's from Sodom because that's where her, her dad is. Where did all the wives go, go then? I don't or, know. All right. Well, somehow lost, Lot lost his wives along the way. Okay. 80. <laughs> Traveling slowly and stopping often to camp upon our way, we eventually reached Bet El, where we were yet stood at an altar that I had built there at the first. I restored it to its perfect form and offered sacrifices thereon to the Most High Elohim. And I called there upon the name of Yahuwah on all worlds of all worlds and offered praise to the name of Elohim and Barak Elohim and gave thanks before him for all the possessions bestowed upon us and for the many souls we had won in Mitzrayim and for having brought us back safely from that land. Now, after our departure from Mitzrayim, a faction arose among our people upon seeing the great wealth that Pharaoh had entrusted to us, for they desired property, which they could call their own. Lot also was among them, which thing grieved me greatly, but seeing they would not be reconciled, we gave them a portion of the common property, and they departed from us under Lot's direction and settled in the valley of the Yardin River. There they went from place to place as their flocks needed pasture until they reached the city of Sunam, where they mingled with the inhabitants and became one with them. Lot also built a house in Sunam and settled there. But of all that company that went out from us, only Lot maintained his integrity and did not violate the covenants of his kahuna, nor bow to heathen mighty ones. Nevertheless, Lot did not walk perfectly in the way of the fathers, for he dwelt not among the people of Elohim, but built his own house, and he coveted his own property, that he should govern it rather than holding all things common with the Kadeshim. Nevertheless, Lot did continue to serve Yahuwah, and Yahuwah loved him and his family, and his property grew very large. But I was grieved in my heart that Lot had parted from me, for he had stood at my right hand and had been instructed in a better way. Meanwhile, I, with my people, dwelt in Bethel where we did worship Yahuwah our Elohim after the order of the ancients and did strive diligently to establish the order, Kodesh order of Elohim among us in increasing perfection. Wherefore, we did banish from among us all contention, all covetousness, all selfishness, and we were of one heart and of one mind and dedicated in all our service unto Yahuwah and held all things common, for no man called anything his own, 
Now, what do you guys think that looks like? It, it sounds like a very peaceful group of people. And it would have been interesting because Abraham had a, a ton of wives and a ton of daughters at this point. There was a lot of people here. But it shows that this large group can live as a group without infighting, right? Because they, they, they talk about things like this. And I, I would like that. It would be amazing if we could banish covetousness and contention and the selfishness and all things here in the house. Abraham was able to do it like hundreds of people. That's amazing. He's like a leader of leader. Anyone have any thoughts on that at all? Um, no, maybe they just got um, kicked out like a lot. did. Maybe that's why everyone was afraid to like, fight because uh, they like get lo they get, go a lot. Maybe they don't want to fight because it's not a good thing to do. Maybe it's they, Maybe less contention is better than more contention. What do you think, Eli? Hmm. What do you think? Do we have days without contention here, Eli? Hmm. 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 Jobs? Um, some Kate? days. Some days. Yeah, some days there's without contention, but we shall see. The brotherly order is a strange one. All right, 83. One night, Elohim appeared to me in a vision and said, Go up to the top of Hazor and lift up thine eyes and gaze eastward and westward and southward and northward. And behold, all this land for, behold, Unto thee and unto thy seed, after thee shall I give it as an everlasting inheritance. The next day I ascended Katsor, as Yahuwah had, hold on here, what do we have here? Go up to the top of Hazor, and then he says he goes up to Katsor. We need to look at that one and see exactly what that is. So the next day I ascended up to Katsor. And, hopefully I didn't jack everything up. Okay, Katsor, as Yahuwah had commanded me, and I gazed upon all the land from the river of Mitram unto Lebanon and Shinar. From the great sea unto Colin. Now, should it be Shinar or is it Shinar? Anyone ever hear of Shinar before? I don't know. All right, we need to look at that whole area. The whole area of, of Seir, as far as Kadesh, the whole of the great wilderness, which lieth east of Karan, Karan Ran, and the region of Shinar, as far as Pereth. And I'm not sure where these people, these places are. And as I beheld the land, Yahuwah my Elohim spake in my heart, saying, Baruch Avram, I have chosen thee to stand at the head of a multitude. Wherefore unto thee and to thy seed after thee I will give this land, even all that thine eye beholdeth, that ye may possess it forever. And I shall multiply thy seed like the dust of the earth. For even as no man can count the dust of the earth, so shall thy seed be without number. Rise up now and compass the land, this land. Behold, the length of it and the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee and to thy seed after thee forever. Even so, Abram, even so I, Abram, descended from the high place and set out to behold all the land. I commenced at the river of Mitzrayim and came to the shore of the lake besides which I traveled until I reached the mountain of the ox. Thence I turned from the great lake, which is by Sodom, and walked across the breadth of the land until I reached Perath. Thence I journeyed unto, even unto the sea of reeds, which I followed unto its head. Unto its head. There, thence I went onward to the river of Mitzrayim again, having come the whole land according to the command of Yahuwah. When I had completed my journey, I bowed down and praised Yahuwah and returned safely into my family where I found everyone well. Okay, so we've heard this before, right? He, Father Abraham went out, explored the land, saw all the stuff that he had. Um, why, is, you know, why is this important that Abraham is going to see all of this land? And does he see this land in his lifetime? Does he ever actually get this land in his lifetime? I don't believe. I know he dwelled there, but I don't think he ever like inherited like his children or whatever. Because there's a promise to him. This land here is promised to his descendants. So the, the, the sons of Israel are the ones who inherited this. And they're supposed to basically destroy all the people that are inside of it so they can make it clean. But they did not. Yep. They decided to dwell with them and make them... And still, he, and still, even to this day, I mean, even to this day, Israel messed up beyond messed up by allowing the foreigners, the outsiders, the pagans, the heathens, the people that should not be in the land. When Yah told them to be destroyed, they did not do it. And they messed up all the way through, even to Joshua. Joshua was probably the, the top of the, the mess up pole because he's the one that um, got tricked, didn't have the discretion, did not seek Yah. And so he ended up making a, a covenant with a whole bunch of outsiders, and they ended up dwelling with them forever. And they're still there to these days. Okay, 85. We'll do this last one, then we'll, we'll end this. Okay. Not many days thence, under the direction of Yahuwah, I departed from Beit El and settled in the plains of Mamre on the northeast of Kebron. And there I built an altar and offered an offering unto the Most High Elohim and dedicated that land unto Yahuwah. And I held a great feast unto Yahuwah for the time of the Pesach had come 
and together with all the men of my household, invited Mamre, Anaram, and Eshkel, my friends, who were wanderers in the land, and we were and who had joined the believers in the Most High Elohim in the solemn assembly. And after this, all my people ate and drank together with me before Yahuwah. All right, there's some huge meat and potatoes in this. Kind of. Actually, it's not. Well, it is a meat potatoes. What do we have in this that we didn't know from any other scriptures? Uh, he he, Passover. Passover. Passover was being kept in the days of Father Abraham. And that is something that we did not know. Uh, if you only read regular scriptures, you think that the Passover only came in the days of um, the Egyptians when the Israelites were in Mitzrayim and Yah was just about to free them. But for right here, we know that Father Abraham, number one, he kept, he had an altar. Um, and so if he has an altar, we would have to uh, probably uh, understand that he had a bunch of commandments for this altar. Right, a um, bunch of commandments to build an altar, a bunch of commandments on how to slaughter. He, what he, to slaughter? What to slaughter? Yeah, I mean, you would not know any of this stuff, and so people will always say that the law, statutes, and commandments don't apply because they're the old things of Moses. Right? These are the things. Oh, if you want to be with the Moses and be with the old things thousands of years ago, just go with the law. Well, that's the problem. Is that this the law? was long before Moses. It was, it, Adam kept the law, statutes, and commandments. He had sacrifices. Um, we hear, clearly hear, the father Abraham had the Passover. So he was keeping Passover long before the idea of Passover was ever there. So the idea of keeping the laws and saying that they do not apply to us today, they apply to us today the same as they applied to Adam back in the day, Abraham back in the day, Jacob back in the day, all of them. It's the same laws as all it's this same thing now we don't have sacrifices because we don't have a levitical priesthood and we don't need one because we have our messiah we have yahushua jesus the christ who came and died for us as the blood-bought born sacrifice from our creator and so it is by his blood that we are saved but then if you if that's all you have you're going to end up in hell because matthew 7 clearly says that those who think that they know Messiah, that people will come and say, Jesus, Jesus, Messiah, Messiah, Yahushua, Yahushua, I did all these things in your name. I cast out all these demons. We did all these things. And he's going to tell them, depart from me. I never knew you. You were Torahlessness. You are lawless. And so the law is in. It is. It has always been in. It will never be out. And so these are the, the things that we are trying to help people find is the way to the kingdom. And with that, I think we've summed it up today. Anyone else have anything at all? Anything to add to this? Anything to um, keep the keep the Torah? You know, the Torah is the first five books of the Bible, and uh, read it as, com as it should be commanded to you. Yeah, read it. And we're supposed to write this on our heart, mind, and soul. It's supposed to be on our doorposts, or be on our frontlets of our eyes. It's supposed to be everywhere that we are at. And so, if you don't know the Torah, today's the day. Start reading that Torah. All right, guys. We love y'all. Have a wonderful day. All right, shalom. We are out.